welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in New Hallen, which is one of the most iconic spots in all of Copenhagen, and it's easy to see why. The entire row is filled with beautiful colored row houses and half timber frame houses. But what is the story behind these colorful facades? Join me as I delve deeper into the history of paint and color theory in Denmark. Let's start with the very basics. Why do we paint houses? Well, a coating of paint can help weatherproof porous surfaces and increase the longevity of outdoor materials. And it's easier and cheaper to repaint a facade every 10 to 15 years than to build a whole new one. But have you ever thought about how paint was made, especially before modern science? There were several different solutions, but I'll discuss the two most common paints for Danish facades. One of the most common forms of paint in the olden days was milk paint. And yes, it was actually made with milk. They would heat it up uh, after adding an acid to it, and this would separate the casein protein from it. As you might imagine, it smelled quite a bit. After this point, you could add pigments to it, and it's the pigments that bring out this natural, beautiful color. Now, the second type of paint most commonly used was linseed oil paint. Linseed oil is a type of oil that comes from pressed flax seeds. Pigment was often added to a boiled mixture of pine resin, linseed oil, and in some cases, just pure linseed oil. Let's talk pigment. The pigments used for these paints were natural and came from the earth, which is why in Danish they're called jordfrau, earth colors. Sometimes a pigment had a dual purpose as both a paint binder and a color, like quicklime, which produced a white color. These pigments came from a variety of minerals, like iron for red paints and crushed lapis lazuli for brilliant blues. Fun fact, semi-precious stones were imported to Denmark from Persia in massive quantities, in a larger amount than gold, in order to support this paint industry. Now, as I'm sure we all know, just because something is natural though, doesn't always mean it's better. Some of these pigments were toxic, and some contributed to depleting natural resources. So today we use synthetic versions instead. Søren Vastrup, who's a professor at the Royal Danish Academy of Fine Arts, has done extensive work preserving this historical color palette, and his papers and books go into detail the chemistry and history behind these colors. Now we come back to facades overall. Why were some colors chosen over others? Well, to some extent, the color of your paint was a status symbol. Colors that were made of crushed gemstones, like bright blues, were often more expensive than colors made from minerals, like dark reds or yellows. One type of paint in particular, uh, a red paint in Danish called falurol, 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 in Danish called falurol, <laughs> or Swedish red, was made from a byproduct of copper production in the 18th century. It was very affordable, and is the reason why you can see an abundance of red farmhouses in the rural Swedish countryside to this date. You know how Americans dream of a white picket fence? In the 1700s, Swedes dreamt of a potato field and a red house. In Copenhagen in particular, during certain time periods, more colors were trendier than others. That's why the entire city has a kaleidoscope of both bright and muted colors in different neighborhoods. Now, colors and paint colors in Denmark are still very relevant today. If your house in Denmark is listed, or if you want to build a home in certain areas, you will have to use these jordfraues to paint your house. Local urban planning laws stipulate these color requirements. If you're building a new house in an area that requires earth colors, while it's okay to use synthetic pigments, you won't be allowed to paint your summer house like the Palace Movie Theater. Some local planning laws that I've seen even limit the shine level of the paint. So if you really want to build a gorgeous, shiny purple house, I recommend checking your local planning laws before purchasing ground, or you're going to be really disappointed when you can't build your project. So the next time you see these facades around town, I hope you'll have a new appreciation for the history of their color. If you like this video, please subscribe for more lectures on architecture, design, and history. And I'd just like to give a special thanks out to my Patreon supporters. I currently have four. Um, I'm, I'm trying out this Patreon thing. I, I, don't, I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> but if you would like to support, um, please go ahead and click the link um, on my page. And thank you.
Dude, I want you to do an artistic flyaway. No? Color theory in Denmark. <laughs> Woo!